in this session we will talk about discovering and describing the relationships uh, actually in most of the situation the functional form of the system is better than the non functional form but uh, the pattern may not be linear in uh, all the situations so we may have uh, we may uh, have to try some kind of non linear relationships as well so the major consideration uh, while building some kind of model for a time series is to have a model have a function which have minimum sum of squared error or minimum mean square error so in this session we will try to learn like how different forms of functions can be used in time series analysis uh, we have an example of uh, uh, gnp of a country recorded for 10 consecutive years so we are actually trying to have a model which can predict the gnp for the future time points so one possible option is to try a linear model a linear trend model where we regress the gnp on the time variable so this is this kind of model is actually uh, a straight line model which can be used when we have a linear trend in the data if we use this model to make the forecast so here are the forecast by using this linear trend model and these are the squared error so if you look at the numbers there are uh, some quite big squared errors which are indicating some kind of poor performance of this linear trend model while graphically if we see that here is the trend line and these dots are the observed points so these are actually the errors which are in magnitude of hundreds we look at that these errors seem to be small but the square error may be uh, quite high if we try to establish some kind of causal pattern uh, like how we can use some potentially input variables which can be used to model Uh, the relation uh, model the output variable with the help of their relation uh, in the system so uh, in the previous uh, working we have seen uh, that the linear trend model is not working as well as it should be uh, so what we can do we can use some independent variables or some predictor which can be used to model the output variable so uh, we we will have to we will have to consider some potential causes which are actually affecting the gnp for example one might consider that population is potentially a variable which will affect the um, uh, uh, the gnp of a country so the population of the country and the gnp of the country so we are actually considering the theory that gnp is affected by the population of that country so we have along with gnp data we have the data of population so we will actually use this population variable as a potential cause for of the gnp so using this theory we can actually build a mathematical model so if we plot the gnp as a function of population so here is the relationship this is this kind of scatter diagram can be used like how we can have a, a model by relating the gnp to the population so if we fit model sort of regression linear regression model so gnp this is the constant term which is the intercept and this number is actually the regression coefficient or the slope of the line so this coefficient is positive which is indicating a positive relationship between population and the gnp like a country has a larger population then it will have the larger gnp if we use this causal linear model which we have established by regressing the gnp on the population we will have these forecasts and for this model the squared errors are in are shown in the last column if we look graphically for these observed points and this solid line 
is actually the regression line which we have fitted by regressing GNP on the population of that country. So we can observe that uh, it is actually having some kind of errors in there. So graphically it does not seem to be very good model of that. So causal pattern, what we have seen that uh, we actually have fitted two models. One is by regressing the GNP on the time variable while the, uh, in the other model we have regressed the GNP on the population. So what we have learned that these for these two models we are having some kind of uh, uh, large errors in there. But actually we can have um, an idea of the performance of these model by calculating the sum of squared error or the mean squared error. So what we actually uh, observed or learned from this example that two variables may not have a linear relationship. So in the previous models we have tried the linear form of the function. What if we, we have some uh, non-linear form? So what we actually do, we try some exponential form of the function. So if we fit an exponential model, so we have uh, fitted or estimated this relationship between GNP and population. This is actually a non-linear function. So we can forecast the GNP with the help of uh, this relationship where we have uh, modeled the GNP output variable with the help of population. But here this function is not linear, rather it is non-linear. We have uh, forecasted the GNP using this exponential model and here are the squared errors. Now if we plot all these three, the dots are the observed points while this solid line is the linear relationship between GNP and population and this dashed line is the exponential model. So graphically it is showing that uh, this exponential model is relatively closer to the observed points. So if we calculate the performance measures for these models, so time series pattern where we have uh, modeled the GNP with the help of the time variable, the sum of squared error is 7732 while mean square error is 773. For the causal relationship where we have two form of uh, models, one where uh, we have fitted a linear relationship between GNP and the population while for the other we have uh, modeled the system with the help of non-linear relationship. So here are the performance measures. So if you compare the mean square error of these three methods, so clearly this one is the minimum. So what we can say uh, like this uh, uh, exponential model is uh, uh, comparatively a better model for this uh, kind of time series. So here are some important points like time series and uh, causal patterns. Both of these relations, you, we can use the time series pattern as well as the causal relationship uh, to model a time series. Uh, causal uh, relationships are very effective if we are in the position to identify potentially the important causes uh, which are actually affecting the output uh, variable. So there are two things like identification of the right predictor and then uh, using the correct form of the functional relationship. If we have these two with us then definitely we can have a better uh, forecasting model for the outcome variable.